Okay, so iOS 16 has been officially out since September 12th. I'm a little late to the game, but nonetheless, I've been using it for a week now, so I thought I'd talk about some of the new features and changes that I found most interesting. Right off the bat, you'll notice the redesigned lock screen, which seems to be the main thing everyone's talking about, but there's a bit more here than just a visual overhaul, so let's go over that first. So iOS 16 lets you create and customize multiple lock screens, and though the customization options still don't come close to what's possible on many Android phones, there's certainly a more than welcome change. There's a number of featured and suggested wallpapers to choose from here, but the ones that I find most interesting are the dynamic ones, which have the ability of masking parts of the on-screen widgets. Now, of course, this is cool and everything, but it wouldn't be that cool if the wallpaper started masking out useful UI elements. So as soon as you start adding widgets to the screen, the effect will either dial down or go away completely. The widgets, in my opinion, are sparse. Now, if you're someone like me who likes to keep the lock screen pretty clean, that probably won't be much of an issue. But if you were planning on turning your lock screen into a mini control slash info center, you're going to have to make use of stuff like weather information, battery stats, schedule entry, stock info, etc. Really, the list of options is not very long. But the great thing of having multiple different lock screens is that they're not there for just aesthetic purposes. iOS 16 actually lets you set different focus modes for different lock screens, which can help you better manage how you use your phone and how your phone affects what you're currently doing. So for example, you can create a particular screen that unlocks a version of your phone that is specifically tuned for work stuff by toning down or completely shutting down any features and options that might distract you from whatever it is you're planning on doing. And of course, you can tune other lock screens for other types of activities as well. Two years ago when I made the switch to iPhone, I was honestly kind of shocked to find that it didn't have haptic feedback for keyboard input. This is just one of those things that Android phones have had for ages, and for whatever reason, iPhones didn't. But now, they finally do. So by default, iOS 16 haptic feedback for the keyboard is still turned off, but you can enable it by going into settings, sounds and haptics, keyboard feedback, and then toggling this little switch right here. After using it for the past few days, I gotta say it's A1 quality, and again, it's just mind-boggling how long they kept this option out of the iPhone, especially given the fact that this phone has arguably the best haptic technology on the market. Regardless, now it's here. Turn it on, you won't regret it. Especially if you're just coming from Android. Another thing that Android users might appreciate, or laugh at, depending on their mood, is the fact that Apple has brought back the ability to see the phone's battery percentage directly on the status bar. Like the previously mentioned feature, this one is also disabled by default, but you can enable it by going into settings, battery, and then toggling on the battery percentage option, which should be the first one from the top. One thing to be noted here is that, at the moment, this feature is not available for all currently supported models of the iPhone, including the iPhone XR, iPhone 11, iPhone 12 mini, and iPhone 13 mini. However, according to 9to5Mac, the latest beta of iOS 16.1 does bring the battery percentage indicator to those devices, so it's reasonable to expect that the final version will as well. Another new feature that is not supported on all models of the iPhone is the ability to use Face ID in landscape. If you take a look at the iOS 16 key features and enhancements notes, they just say that it works on supported models. However, it doesn't provide a list of those models. I'm currently using an iPhone 12 Pro Max and it definitely doesn't work for this model. It just looks like it does because I'm tilting my head next to the camera here. According to some reports, it does appear to work on iPhone 13 models and it would be bizarre if it were to not work on the new models, so. Okay, this next thing is gonna make me sound like a creep, but I think it's a change that has been long overdue nonetheless. The hidden folder in the Photos app is now locked. It's locked by default, and as far as I can tell, there seems to be no way of keeping it unlocked. Which, if you ask me, is the way it should be. If you don't want any photos behind a lock, why even put them in a hidden folder? And if you do put them there, it only makes sense that they be available only for you. Previously, you could only prevent the hidden folder from being listed in the Photos app, but that didn't make too much sense because let's say you left your unlock phone on a table or something and someone got access to it, they could just go into the settings app, turn it back on, and just like that, get access to all your disgusting, vile filth, I don't even want to think about it, whatever, you're safe now. And the recently deleted folder is also locked, so there you go. 
With iOS 16, dictation got a lot better, and I want to focus on three particular new capabilities, starting with auto punctuation, which pretty much does what it says it does. While you're dictating, iPhone will now not only convert your speech into text, but it'll add punctuation marks where it sees fit as well. After playing around with it for the past few days, I gotta say that works pretty well, but the downside is that it's currently only available for a limited set of languages. The second thing is something that I'm gonna call voice touch continuity. I really can't think of anything better to call it at the moment, but what it does is allow you to fluidly move between voice and touch, which means that you can type with the keyboard, move the cursor around, insert suggestions, etc., all without the requirement of stopping dictation. And finally, emojis. While dictating, you can now just say the well-established name of a particular emoji and your iPhone will make it appear just like that. All in all, I gotta say that I like the upgrades that they've made here and I'm sure a lot of people will definitely put them to good use. This is a pretty minor one, but I think it's nice anyway. So if you take a look at the home screen, you'll notice this little button down here, and if you tap on it, it will take you to Spotlight. Now, this is nothing too special because you can always open up Spotlight simply by swiping down from pretty much anywhere on the screen. But the thing that I find super useful is the fact that the search bar is now located just above the keyboard, which means that it's always at your thumb's reach. One-handed use can be a challenge, especially on these larger models, and I think it's little things like this that can really make a difference, so good job. One new feature in iOS 16 that can really make your life easier is the ability to edit and even completely unsend messages. According to the release notes, you can now edit messages for up to 15 minutes after sending them, and you can unsend them for up to two minutes. Furthermore, in regards to editing, users can make up to five edits to a given message, but the recipients will be able to see a record of those edits. Also, both these features seem to work only if the recipient is on iOS 16 as well. So, something to have in mind, I guess. Okay, so you know that nifty little feature that allows you to select text and photos, copy it, translate it, look it up, etc.? I swear, nowadays we take that sort of stuff for granted, but just 10 years ago, it would have seemed like it was magic or something. Well, iOS 16 takes things even further by introducing the same ability in videos. And it works exactly the same as in photos. All you have to do is pause the video, find some text, tap and hold to select it, and then just do whatever you want from there. Now, if that feature would have seemed like magic 10 years ago, here's something that might seem like magic even today. Maybe not so much for what it does, because there already are tools out there that do the same thing, but for how surprisingly well it does it in such a short amount of time. If you've ever done any sort of image editing or graphic design, you know how much time and effort it can take to do even a mediocre job in cutting out an object from the background. Well, here's how this works on iOS 16. You open up a photo, preferably one that has at least some basic distinction between the foreground object and background. You long press on the object and in about one second, it lifts the object from the background and then you can copy and paste it into an editing app or you can just use it as a sticker in a messaging app. Now, it doesn't always do a perfect cutout, especially if it's dealing with very complex photos where it has to work around things like hair or fuzzy edges, but given the fact that it does this in like a second, I'd say it works pretty darn well. And in time, I can see it only getting better. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Of course, an amateur would say in order to end a video. There's obviously a ton of other little changes here, like notifications appearing from the bottom in the notification center, or the ability to get additional information by tapping on modules in the weather app. No always on display though, even though these phones have had OLED screens for years now. Looks like that's a feature that Apple has exclusively reserved for the newer models. Gotta sell those units somehow, I suppose. Anyway, that's it for this time. Feel free to start a conversation in the comments below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong.